Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Canon PowerShot G10. It dates back to 2008. It was their first G series. They used the Digit 4 processor. It has a 14.7 megapixel, 1 over 1.7 inch uh, CCD sensor. That sensor is 7.5 by 5.5 millimeters. Not real big but it allowed it to stay pretty compact and have a decent zoom. Uh, the lens is 6.1 to 30.5 millimeters. That's equivalent to a 28 to 140 millimeter on a 35 millimeter frame. It's a powered zoom. It uses this little rocker that surrounds the shutter switch. It's 11 elements in 9 groups. It seems pretty good. Uh, I like it so far. Um, it'll focus from a half a meter to infinity and close focus in macro mode uh, is down to one centimeter. Macro is pretty nice on this. Uh, auto focus and it activates with a half press uh, is continuous or single it also has a manual focus mode. I have not actually used that yet. It's got a bunch of different modes. Um, face detect, uh, nine point, uh, center, and then what they call flexi zone, where you can move the uh, autofocus point around. You can see it on the LCD. The aperture is f2.8, stops down to f12.9, at 28 millimeters and it's f4.5 to f20.7 uh, when you're zoomed all the way to 140 millimeters. It has a mechanical and electronic shutter. It goes from 15 seconds to 1 4 thousandth of a second. Um, I have not found a bulb mode on this guy. I downloaded the manual. Didn't find it there either. Maybe it can. I'm not sure. Um, ISO is settable from 80 to 1600 and that's in full stops and it uses this ring uh, below the mode dial here to select your film speed. I've been shooting mostly at native 80 like a lot of small sensors. This one gets pretty darn noisy uh, once you get up around 400 or higher. It also has uh, auto ISO um, where it'll try at least to leave your aperture and your shutter fixed and it'll vary the exposure using the ISO setting. There's also a high auto setting where you tell it don't go above this ISO and other than that um, it is automatic. It includes an integral three uh, stop neutral density filter so that you can use a wide aperture and bright light to get that nice shallow depth of field. Uh, it's got a dedicated exposure compensation dial, plus or minus two stops and third stop steps. And I've used this quite a bit. Um, like a lot of small point and shoots, you know, if you've got something that's just a very small part of the scene, but that's what's important in the scene, you know, normally it's going to try and average over it. Um, and it tends to kind of blow things out. So it's really nice and handy because if you're using uh, the viewfinder rather than the LCD, you don't have to stop and look at what you're doing. If you've got it on zero, you just swing it. And remember, it's third stop steps. It's really, really handy. Um, it's got an optical zoom viewfinder. It zooms to match uh, the lens zoom setting, so that's really nice. And it also has a diopter um, for adjusting for if I'm shooting without glasses. These are my computer glasses. Um, really nice. I always like it when that's built in. has a 3-inch fixed LCD. Um, it's pretty nice. This one's not too beat up, amazingly. I got it from a thrift store. Uh, it's got your normal modes, uh, programmed auto exposure, shutter priority, uh, aperture priority, and manual. And it's got auto, 
um, where basically the camera decides everything. It's got two custom settings, so if you get down and monkey in the menus and find something that you really, really like, you can set it to either C1 or C2 here on the dial. That's nice. And it's also got uh, scene modes. I have not really used those. Some of them seem pretty nice. I use monochrome every now and then. And it's got a stitch assist setting. If you're uh, you know, doing a panorama, it'll help you glue those guys together for you. Help you glue. It'll help you glue those guys together. Um, the movies on this kind of show its age. They're just 600, uh, 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second, and it only records in mono. Um, they look okay, they're just low resolution. And the flash, let me enable it here, is good for 0.3 to 4.6 meters, about 1 to 15 feet, uh, with the lens set wide, and uh, 0.5 meters to 2.8 meters, one and a half to nine feet uh, when you're at max zoom. And it has the usual array of settings, auto, on, always on for like fill flash, off, red eye, slow sync, the usual slow shutter speed and pop the flash. Um, a nice feature, it has a second curtain shutter and the power for the flash is also adjustable, uh, plus or minus two stops and third stop steps. And it has a nice hot shoe. It's compatible with the Canon EX series of uh, external flashes. So this is a handy little camera. It's built like a tank too. Most of the body is metal. It's a heavy little sucker. But for my size of hands, it feels pretty good, you know, index finger controlling the zoom, and it's got the usual mode dial back here for macro, flash, uh, continuous shooting or self-timer, and then also the manual focus. Um, it's really well laid out and easy to use. Um, it had a, a memory card in it and a battery but no charger and the battery was dead. So I really took a chance buying this guy. But I had an aftermarket charger for a different camera that was the right voltage. So I was able to put some little screws in the plastic to just touch the contacts on the battery and then some alligator clips. And I was able to charge it up before I splurged and bought another battery and a charger for it. Um, Thankfully, that worked. I had a run of bad luck with uh, some other cameras I was shooting with. With the G-Series, Canon was kind of all over the place. Um, the earlier models had an F2 lens and a smaller sensor and a tilting, articulating uh, LCD. Uh, then the sensor got bigger, the aperture got dimmer, they went to a fixed LCD. In the, I believe it was the G7, for whatever reason, they removed raw support. People squawked, so they issued a firmware update uh, that would fix that. Um, current ones, I believe, are still using a one-inch sensor um, and have an electronic viewfinder rather than an optical viewfinder. It seems like every time Canon fixed something, they took something away that people really wanted. So it's got kind of a bizarre history of this entire series, but I really like it, and I'm going to keep shooting with it for a while, and I will see you then.